QuickBooks Online 2024. Make loan payments. Get ready because we're going to bookkeeping cloud nine with QuickBooks Online 2024. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars 2024 QuickBooks Online sample company file we set up in a prior presentation, opening up the major financial statement reports as we do every time. Reports on the left-hand side in the favorites, right-click on that balance sheet, open link in a new tab, right-click in the profit and loss to open link in a new tab, one more time on the trial balance, open link in a new tab. Let's tab to the right. Close up the hamburger and change the range up top. We're going from 010124 tab, 013124 tab. We will run it to refresh it and then tab to the right. Repeat the process. Hamburger needs to be closed. Opening up the range. We're going from 010124 tab, 013124 tab. Refreshing again and then we'll tab to the right. Repeat the process one more time. Ultra vase. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because apparently, we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com 010124 tab, 013124 tab, and run it to refresh it again. Let's go back to the balance sheet tab. In a prior presentation, we talked about the loan balance. So, Let's go down to the loan. Down here in our liabilities, we took out a loan. Here it is in uh, the 72,000. Now we're gonna imagine that payments are happening on the loan. And how are we gonna deal with those payments? So notice the loan can be deceptively complex to be dealing with because you would think it would be an easy thing to pay off the loan if we have an installment loan that is paid monthly, similar to what we might have if we have a loan for a mortgage or something. You just make the same payment, it's the same amount. Why can't I just basically use the bank feeds to automate the transaction as the electronic transfers happen out of my checking account? I should be able to see them coming through the bank feeds and simply record an expense type of form, which would look like this, possibly with the help and use of the bank feeds, and the other side go into some other account, like the loan balance account, instead of an expense account, because we're paying down the loan. Well, you could do that, but the problem is that the, the loan, ban well, there's multiple problems with the loans that could be deceptively simple and subtle. And one, one is that there's gonna be interest involved. So now we have to deal with the interest. How are we going to deal with the interest? What is interest? Interest is basically the rent on the purchasing power of the money. So when we pay down the loan, we're not just going to be reducing the principal. We also have to pay, in essence, the rent that just goes poof in the air, just like the rent for the office building that we are in. Once we use the office building, we pay the rent and poof, it's gone. Uh, and that's the way it is. So that so you might say, well, that's still not an issue, really, because I can just still use the the same transaction and memorize the transaction as we make the payments because then i'll just include three accounts instead of two accounts and i could still memorize that that's not too difficult but there's still a glitch in the system and that is that as we saw with our amortization table we built last time although the payment is the same the breakout of the interest and the principal will differ with each payment so you can't just automate the process very easily unless you try to record all the transactions kind of in advance and, and let them record and then tell them to record periodically or something like that, right? You can't just you can't just memorize the bank feed transaction, in other words. So how do you deal with that? Well, one way you could deal with that is you could say, I'm going to separate the duties, me on the bookkeeping side, and then my CPA or tax preparer 
on the adjusting entry side. So I could say, look, I'm just going to automate my books because I want to make things as fast and easy and automated as possible. Therefore, I'm going to ignore the interest entirely and simply wait till it clears the bank and then record the reduction to cash and the other side going directly to the loan payable account. And then at the end of the year, I will ask my CPA or accountant to then adjust this for my client or for me, giving us the amortization schedule. And then they record the interest periodically at the end of the month or a year, possibly just a year if it's a small business and they need this for taxes or external reporting so that it's correct for tax preparation. That could actually work fairly well because then again, that's the easiest thing to do. You could fully automate the system, but you have to have a CPA firm or accounting firm that knows how to make an amortization table and do adjusting entries to break out the interest and make the loan balance balance to what's on the amortization schedule. Now, another issue that comes up, which we'll talk more about in the adjusting entries process is that you might have multiple loans. So remember, if you have multiple loans, then you, it, it's easiest to have a parent loan account and then make sub accounts per loan. Otherwise you have all your loans in one place, which is fine for external reporting, but it's a little bit more difficult to tie in that loan balance to each of the amortization tables. So that's why I would recommend making a new loan for each, each uh, a new loan account for each type of loan. And some businesses have a lot of loans, like construction businesses, for example, often have a lot of loans because they're financing the equipment as part of their business. So uh, I, would, I would do that. And then the other issue that comes up is breaking out the short-term and long-term portion of the loan. So if we, if we think about our amortization table, that we have a five-year loan. So the amount in one year then you would think would be short term because it's due within a year. That's the definition of a current liability. And the stuff that's after a year would be long term. But if I break that out every time I make a payment, it's going to mess things up because then I have to make an adjustment for the short term and long term portion, which will change every time I make a payment. So again, normally what the process would be, would be I'm just going to do the, the payment transactions in one account and rely on my CPA firm or tax preparer to break out the long-term and short-term portion if necessary at year end in order to do whatever I need to do, such as tax preparation, where it might not be necessary, and external reporting uh, type, type of, of purposes, and then have them fix it after that, doing a reversing entry, putting it back into one account, because the one account system is the easiest system to use for the internal bookkeeping side of things. So that's a standard periodic kind of adjusting entry, although it's not a classic adjusting entry. We'll talk more about that in the adjusting entries section. Right now, what we want to do is make a payment according to our amortization schedule. So we're going to use the method of making the amortization schedule and then creating a payment in accordance with the amortization schedule so that our loan balance will always match what's on the amortization table. So we imagine last time this was our loan. This is the amortization table we put together. It's a five year loan, which means there's 60 payments. The rate was 5%. The rate per month then is that, which is just a 5% divided by 12. And then this is the payments that we're going to make every month. We made our amortization table then. This is the first payment that we're going to make. This is the second payment. So here's the payment. Here's the amount of interest charged. This will be the loan reduction and or principal reduction, whatever you want to call it. And this will be the loan or principal balance after that first payment. So that's what we'll do first. We'll record one at the beginning of the month and then one at the end of the month so that we can see two payments and see how they are different and recognize the issue that happens because of that when we try to automate this transaction. So let's do this one first. Simple transaction. We're going to go to the first tab. I'm going to select the plus button and we'll just use a, let's use a check form. We could use an expense or a check form. I'll use a check form. All right. So we're going to say this is, let's say the, the loan is with Chase. So I'm going to put Chase in here just as a bank. And this is actually going to be a vendor. So I'm going to say Chase vendor because I have a customer, but I want to make it a vendor. And I'm going to say, there it is. I'm going to say, save it. And we're going to go from uh, the bank account. So we'll pay it out of the bank account. That makes sense. So we're going to say that this is going to happen as of the new month. So I'll say the beginning of the month. 
we're going to imagine that first payment went out in February. The check number actually should be the 16th or uh, 1016 because I want that to match what's on my bank uh, statements. And I think that's what's on the bank statement that should populate automatically once we're in sync. But I think we made an adjustment to it in a prior presentation. So it's a little off. All right. So this is the first transaction that has two accounts impacted down below. The first thing that might come to mind is the loan payable account because that's what we're paying off. Loan payable. So we're going to say loan payable amount, but it's not going to go down by the full amount that we're paying. So if I then look at what I'm going to pay, it's it's one, three, five, eight, seventy three. But the loan payable is only going to be going down by the one, oh, five, eight, seven, three, because interest has to be recorded. So now we have two accounts impacted, which we haven't seen too often. So it's 1058.73, I think if I remember that. And then the other side is going to go to interest. So the other side is going to be interest. And notice I'm going to look for the account that they have. Do they have an interest account? They have interest paid. I don't really like that term because it, it kind of indicates that you paid the interest, mean, meaning you're like on a cash based system. It's possible to have interest that hasn't been incurred that you have not yet paid. So I'd rather just have it called interest expense, but I'm not going to make another account called interest expense. Instead, I'll possibly change this account. If I made another account that could cause problems because then I have two accounts that have a similar name. So I'm going to say, I'm going to use that account and then possibly change the name of it because I don't like that name at, as much. And then I'm going to say the other, the, the interest is $300. So 300 to interest. And that gives me a total of the 135873. So 135873. So what's this transaction going to do? It's a checking, it's a check. It's going to decrease the checking account by the full amount, 135873. But the other side goes to two accounts, one of them being interest, $300, because that's similar to paying the rent on an office building. We're paying the rent on the use of the loan balance and the rest of it isn't going to rent on the use of the loan balance but actually giving back part of the office building in, in that analogy right we're giving a room back we're giving part of the loan back the reduction of the principal that has not yet you know we have okay so that's the idea let's do it let's save it and close it and then check it out and so i'm going to go to the to the balance sheet now and we'll scroll up and run it and then of course if i go into uh, the checking account, by the way, I wanted to get into the practice of me breaking this account out by uh, I'm in month two. So let's change the range. I've been I'm still on the old range. O two twenty eight two four. Sorry about that. Let's go month by month and break it out month by month. Get your head in the game. You were in February. Now you're living in the past, man. You're living in the past. So if I go in here uh, in February, then there's our check. So that's the full amount of the check. All right, and then go back up. And then let's go to the profit and loss and change the range again. Go to 022824. I, I stay in the present. I'm mindful of the present time. Uh, that's I'm practicing my mindfulness to be in. The, I don't know what I'm talking. So interest paid. There's the interest. So the interest in February now. So we have a loss, of course, on the uh, income statement. So that's the idea. Pretty simple transaction, but it's difficult to save that transaction given the fact that the next balance that we have, let's make it green, will not be exactly the same even though the dollar amount is the same. So the dollar amount is the same. The, the accounts impacted will be the same, but the interest and the loan reduction will differ making it difficult to memorize the transaction. So let's record this one. Now I'm going to record this at the end of the same month so that we have them both in the same month. Normally they would be in different months, but we're going to imagine, you know, it's a month apart, but they happen to both payments happen to be made in February, just so we can see them in the same month uh, side by side. So let's do that. I'm going to go to the first tab and I'm going to do this again, a plus button, and we'll make another expense form. And it's going to go to Chase again, Chase, Chase, Vendor. And then I'm going to say this happens on 022824. So we're jumping forward in time, but we're doing so so we can make a direct comparison 
of uh, these two items. If I select the category drop down, well, actually, wait a sec. I don't want to make an expense form. I want to make another check form. I'm going to close that back out. Do you want to leave without saving? Yes, it's, we'll make it a check form because I was using check, same form, but I want to use the check numbers. You're confusing people. I know, I know, I'm sorry. Editor, cut cut that one out. J just kidding. We're, we're 022824. We'll survive. So we're going 1017. And notice it memorized the last transaction. Great. The accounts, perfect. But the amounts are different. That's the problem. So now I have to go in here. And if it was a bank feed that I waited till it cleared the bank, I have the similar issue. I can't just memorize the transaction There's, because the, these two amounts will keep on being different. And so I won't be able to just automatically uh, put the bank feeds on and automatically just do this. I always have to go back to the amortization table and then say, well, the interest is, well, let's do the principal 1063.14. So this is now has to be 1063.14. And then the interest is now uh, 29559. So 295.59. And that still comes out to 1358.373. Uh, Same amount that we're paying, but that breakout differs, messing, messing up the whole thing. So you could try to memorize transactions or pre-record the transactions and record them, you know, at a future time according to the amortization table or something like that. But it's like I said, it's not as easy to just automate the transactions that would come through the bank feed as you would with like a telephone bill where you're just saying if it if I paid Verizon, just put it to the telephone expense. So what's this going to do? It's going to do the same thing. It's a check. It's going to decrease the checking account by the same amount, 135873 at the end of the month. But the loan balance is now going to go down by 16314 And the interest, instead of $300, the rent that we're paying on the purchasing power is less because the loan balance uh, was less than it originally was for the second month. So let's go ahead and save and close it and check it out let's go to the balance sheet and see what's happening happening in the balance sheet in the current period now go into the checking account and we will of course check out the checking so same numbers here between these two checks looks the same there go back but when we go down to the loan down here uh the loan is a rebel and it does something different we're going to go into it it's acting all on all crazy on its own here it's got different stuff happening that's where the problem uh that's where the problem is now the loan balance if we're entering it this way according to the amortization table should tie out to the amortization table six nine eight seven eight thirteen so six nine eight seven eight thirteen so that's correct by the way if you wanted to use an amortization table that you look up just look up amortization table and you can calculate it with these quick little tables as well I still think it's better to do it internally because that, but that maybe I just like doing that. But if you wanted to use the amortization table for budgeting, I think it's good to do it in Excel. I just think it's a good practice to look at too. But uh, a lot of people probably aren't into that uh, and that's cool. So let's go to the income statement. And if I go into the income statement, then we need to refresh and so down here, now we've got the interest. If I go into the interest for February, then we now have the 300 and the, the, the 295.59. So we have different amounts of rent. The rent per month is going down, even though we're making the same dollar amount of total payment because the loan balance is actually less, even though we're paying off the same dollar amount. So you can see that the trade-off here, what, what, why do we structure the loans this way? because we want to have the payments here and here be the same, right? We want all the payments to be the same because that makes it easiest for like just cash flow budgeting. But the, the cost of us keeping the dollar amount the same is the fact that the interest in principle will differ because of the reduction kind of in the, in the loan balances. So there's kind of some pros and cons of that. So remember if, you, if, if the easiest way to do this if you work with two people would be to, like I say, just report the whole thing to a reduction of the loan and then let your accountant adjust it according to the amortization table at the end of the year where they can just break it out at year end.
right? Because the idea would be if I just if I just recorded the full amount reducing the loan, my balance sheet and, and it would be off and I would have nothing on the profit and loss for interest. And then they could do a journal entry, which would basically record all the interest, which would just be the sum of this and, and record interest expense on the other side to the loan balance resulting in the proper interest expense that we can then put on the tax return or on financials. And then the ending balance should tie out to what it should be at the end of the year, right? That would be some pretty easy adjustment to make if, you know, if you have an accountant that can do that. If they don't do that, like if you, if you try to use that method and you don't have a tax preparer that knows how to do that, or they just forget to do it or whatever, you don't tell them to do it, then you're not going to get the interest expense, which should be a deduction for taxes, at least uh, in the United States, which can be significant. So if you're going to plan that way, you got to make sure that you're talking with people that know what they're doing and have and you've got some communication happening to make sure that what needs to be done is being done. OK, so in any case, that's going to be it. Let's go to uh, the trial balance and see where we stand over here. And so we could, I need to change the range again, 0 to 2824, and let's run it. Now note, again, you could try to do this on a month by month basis, but like we said before, it's not always uh, the perfect thing to do because notice down here on the income statement in both uh, months, even you know in February, it's recording the entire uh, income statement for the year. Why is it doing that? Because, because QuickBooks doesn't, know, doesn't have the capacity to close out the income statement month by month. It only closes out the income statement basically year by year. So that's why it's not, it's not as good to do that. So the result is that the balance sheet up here, you can see, is reporting properly as of the end of February compared to the end of January. But the income statement isn't being closed out properly. So you're basically seeing this is kind of like the year to date uh, income statement instead of the income statement for just February. Okay, so that's the idea. But you can see these are the ending numbers uh, where we stand here. So we have the check if we if we go through this, we've got the, the, the balance sheet on top of the income statement, cash is an asset, calcium is an asset, inventory is an asset, investments an asset, payments to deposit asset prepaid insurance asset accumulated depreciation contra asset, tied directly to the furniture and equipment and then the liabilities so all the assets are basically debits liabilities and equity are what the company has that they're going to uh or what the crew has claimed to what the company has liabilities visa liability uh for the state taxes the government the loan payable we owe that to the bank then the payroll taxes that we have withheld and our payroll taxes we owe that to the government and then the equity section is all of this down here now. So we have the equity of the investment that we put in, the owner's equity, and then the entire income statement. This part of the income statement representing the full two months year to date for 2024. If I was to add that up on the debit and credit side, it should have a net uh, credit for the whole period, right? So we'd have the billable uh, expense, boom. We're gonna say start here. 200 plus 46877 plus 6780 minus 37242 minus 595.59 minus the 813.56 plus the 339.33 minus 6983.33 minus the 700 minus the 410 minus the 620 gives us the 683185. If I go to my profit and loss, did, did I calculate that right? So we're going to say. That's not what was for the month, that's for the year, right? 683185, boom. So then, so if I go to the next year, then QuickBooks will properly close this stuff out to equity. This whole income statement will roll into the owner's equity. Let's check that out. Going from 010125 to, to let's just say 010125, we'll just use the same. And so now, now everything rolls into uh, the owner's equity, as you can see here. So that that that's how it's working. So trial balance is a little bit tricky. Great report to use. Works best when you're using it from a year by year basis. The year to date numbers 
uh, as opposed to a month by month, at least with regards to like the income statement because of the way the closing process works automatically within QuickBooks, but on a yearly basis rather than a monthly basis.